Hey, it's Tim here. In 2021.2, Tableau have enabled explained data for viewers, but they've also given the explained data interface a massive revamp, and they've given authors additional controls as to how explained data works for viewers who can now access the feature. The thing is though, it's not enabled by default. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the new interface and how to set it up so viewers can use this in their own exploration of data. All right, let's get stuck in. I'm here in Tableau 2021.2. I'm actually just gonna open the Sample Superstore workbook. This is a workbook that everyone has, so we can just go ahead and open it. And once this is open, I'm just gonna go through essentially what's changed with explained data once this opens up. And here we are, we have the executive overview. This is a very standard sort of uh, sample workbook. It's pretty much the only sample workbook you should use to compare performance on Tableau server and Tableau desktop. But anyway, we want to go to the uh, product level breakdown because here we can actually get some useful analysis for our data. And I know this is the same for everyone, so it's a good place to go. Now, if I go over here to the corporate tab, you'll see that I have uh, two data points that are a little bit sort of different compared to the other data sets. So as a viewer, what I might want to do is, you know, understand why that is. What's causing the behavior to be so different in these particular data points? And so in the past, what you've been able to do is to just click on the data point. Uh, and of course, if there's any actions or filters, that of course changes the visualization. Uh, but the key thing here is that explained data has previously been in the past sort of not been available for viewers. That's this option here. It's actually been available for authors so that they can understand what's going on and it can sort of help them, uh, you know, understand where to go next with their analysis. But now this option is available for viewers. And so when we click on this little option here, um, we'll get this new interface for explained data. Now you'll notice a couple of things. Previously, it used to be a pop-up window where it opened up in the middle of the window and you could see the analysis and drag things around. This time around, we've got a new interface item for Tableau. And I think this is actually a bigger deal than it is because um, the fact that we've got this whole pane on the right-hand side suggests this won't be the only thing that will live on this right hand side uh, part of the pane. Um, but nonetheless, explain data is the first thing that we see here. And we can, of course, um, see the different analysis that it's pulled out. Now, the way explain data works is it does some statistical analysis of the field and it tries to understand, hey, what's causing this particular data point to behave this way? And it does that by looking at all the fields pulling out the pertinent measures that it thinks are important, the pertinent dimension that it thinks are skewing things, and then it tries to summarize that for you in a detailed view. So if we have a look at this, we've got this explained mark, and for the record, the explained mark is always the mark you selected. So this explained mark is this data point here. If I selected a range of marks, I think it would work over a broader range, but generally speaking, it works better on just one mark because then you're sort of focusing in on the question. Now. Um, the office supplies, Hoover, stove, red corporate appliances, essentially what's explaining this particular data point. Um, and then there's three values here that's pulled out. So profit, sales, and profit ratio, okay? So you're saying it's a higher than expected profit. And then when you click on this arrow here on the right-hand side, it actually goes to a new page in this particular pane, and it runs a little query. In essence, it's actually doing some analytics for you. The fact that it runs that query means it's actually querying the data itself to try and give you the analysis that it thinks is pertinent. And you'll see here that there's two key things that are important. So you've got the mark attributes, okay? So record level values and their aggregates in the data source sample superstore may be contributing to the value of sum of profit. So if I then open this explanation, it says the average profit here is 2,179. So basically the average profit for this uh, bunch of items is rather high. And if you notice there, it actually sort of drew a visualization for me there. So it's really taking me deep into the analysis. So now we're three levels in deep. We've understand, look, the mark has this sort of strange behavior. The average profit is super high. And you can actually, the really cool thing is this is actually a chart. You can actually interact with it and just, it's like you're in a dashboard. And you can actually interact with it and you can then start to see how this might be skewing your data, okay? The other really cool thing is this really small icon here where you can actually pop this chart out. So if you want to bring out this chart, if you click on that icon, it actually creates the chart for you. I don't know what it's gonna do here. I haven't actually tried this myself. I think it creates a new sheet and there we go. It keeps the pane open on the right-hand side and now we have uh, this exact same chart now available on the main screen. And actually, this is analysis that you can take on. The only downer here is it's put this label over the data point. It's sort of not so smart. This little label supposed to be pointed to this data point. And so it just explains that anomaly really well. This is nice if you need to just print this out very quickly, put this in a PDF, or you've got some edge case data points, you've done some dashboards, and then there's three data points. 
you can quickly use explain data, hopefully to get at these insights much, much more quickly. Okay. Now, the key thing is it's opened up a new view and our selection has changed. So one thing you'll notice is that it's telling us just here that your selection has changed. Essentially, it's noticed that what I've picked in my view and generally speaking, if we're talking about views, I'm talking about what I've picked in this sort of box here in the space that I build my visualization. It's telling me that that's changed and because that's changed. Uh, the analysis that it's doing, which is over here in this explained data window, which I'll just go behind my face here, is actually no longer accurate. Okay, so it's basically just telling you, hey, your perspective has changed. You might want to reselect things. Okay, but I don't want to actually do that. What I want to do is go back to the analysis that I was doing, which is over in product. And you can see that when I go back here, now this little message that was here is gone. So it has some contextual awareness of what's going on. I'd love a little back button here in the explain data to take me back to where I was doing the analysis, but nevertheless, it does remember where you are and it sends you back. Okay. So that's the first thing. We've only just done the first bit of analysis here on mark attributes. The other thing, if I just collapse this in, we'll see that we have uh, relevant measures here. So the measures may be contributing to the higher sum of profit. So basically it's looking at the average profit and then it's basically looking at the sales forecast and the sales. So if we open up the sales forecast, the average sales forecast is increasing the expected profit of the explained mark. Now, Tableau is just doing what it can to understand your measures. So sometimes this analysis doesn't sort of quite hit the mark for me because a sales forecast is a sales forecast. How can that be increasing the profit? It can't. So in this analysis, it's just basically looking at the forecast. It doesn't understand that the sales forecast and the sales are two different things. So in this case, I can sort of disregard the sales forecast, but I'll show you how to solve that properly in a second. Um, if I go to sales here, this is the actual field we're interested in. The average sales is increasing the expected profit of the explained mark. So in this case, I think this is accurate because this is not our forecast. This is our actual sales value. So in this case, you can see yet another chart. And if I hover over it, it gives me the detail that I need to see there. And I can actually start to work with it more clearly. Now, you'll notice that I said before that the sales forecast wasn't pertinent. So you can actually remove this from the analysis. So let me go. I'm actually going to need to move my face up here to the top. And um, what I essentially need to do is you see this little gear icon. When I click that, I get this amazing pop out. And this pop out does a couple of things things. Number one, it shows me what fields are being used in the analysis. And number two, it shows what explanation types are actually being uh, computed in this data set. And most importantly, it also gives me a place where I can actually enable this for viewers. So if you don't tick this box, viewers won't be able to use explain data when they're doing their analysis. So you can keep this as a creator author only feature, or if you tick this box, it's not ticked by default, you'll actually enable this for viewers to do their own insight. Now, when you do that, as you've just seen, uh, you know, it pulled up sales forecasts as something that, you know, is, is important when I know it's not important. So you need to be able to sort of go in here and curate these things. You might want to change, for example, some of the analysis it's doing. You might have a data set that doesn't lend itself well to extreme values because it's a, you know, an edge case data set. You might have some sort of uh, analysis that doesn't make sense. A number of records doesn't make sense because you're dealing with really large data sets where things move around a lot. And so although Tableau thinks it's relevant, it might not actually be relevant because you understand the beta data better than it does. So these are all things you can do. And when you tick this box, allow explained data to be used in the workbook when viewed online, you get a additional options. So you allow all users to see extreme values explanations with record level data and do not show extreme value explanations. So by default, this is on do not show extreme value definitions. Essentially, by default, Tableau is not going to start talking about what's happening at the extremes of your data, but it will still show you as a creator and you'll still be able to do that. But if you want to enable that, you can, of course, tick that radio button and it gives you a warning. Extreme value explanation display record level information in underlying data. Do not enable extreme values if your workbook uses sensitive data. So essentially, this is a security thing that you need to be aware of, because if you enable explain data and then you don't give people sort of the ability to drill down to that data and then through explain data, they're actually able to get to it. That's not going to be a great look. So again, it's off by default, so you can't really make this mistake, but just be aware of this warning that it's really, really important. OK, so. Nonetheless, you do get a lot of controls here. Now, before when I came to this fields page, you'll notice that it didn't show up. I had a little bug and it's now loaded. You can actually change what's being analyzed. So I can actually go down here to some of sales forecast and you'll see that it's an automatic. I can set this to never include this in analysis because the forecast is exactly that. 
In this case, it's actually in a forecast based on a parameter. So it doesn't make any sense to have that in there. Essentially, it's just a parameter that lets you choose the percentage and that changes the forecast based on sales. So it doesn't make sense to include that in this analysis. So if you tick never include, you click OK. Now that will never be included in my analysis. And so although it's in here now, if I was to click out again and I was to reselect things. OK, so if I was to go in here and then do this again and then just do this, um, you should see that it will think about it again. And if we go back into profit and we look at the sales uh, analysis that it did, we should now notice that the sales forecast is no longer there. And you can see that that's worked exactly as described. We only have sales in here. So you do get control, but again, you've got to spend the time. You've got to invest some energy into making that work. Okay. I'm going to move my face back down here, just where I'm used to it being. And I'm just going to go back. So. That's just a deep dive into one of the analysis that it's doing. You can see here that it's done profit sales and profit ratio. And again, each of these analysis, it's going to choose different mark types and different things each time. And you've got to really sort of, you know, play around with your data and explore it. But I think this is a nice addition because it gives people the ability to just go a bit beyond what they've been given in terms of reporting. And it can also help people sort of articulate better what they'd like to see. Maybe there's a there's an angle in one of these extreme values and maybe there's an angle in another part of the chart that you know works a lot better now again the analysis that you get there is really really powerful but tableau is always making a guess as to which fields it's using so you can see here 16 of 35 fields now when you click on that little blue text if you're wondering where i went i'm just down here on the bottom right hand side um when you click on that, it actually shows you what was used and what was excluded in that analysis. So every time you tick on something or you select something, it's going to look at it and try and guess what it should include and what it shouldn't include. Let's just try that uh, with another data point. So let's just go in here. And um, if we go to another chart, let's go to this customers tab. I want to go to completely different visualization. OK, and let's select um, I'm going to select sales uh, here at the top. And you'll notice this time I've selected a grouping. I've selected a dimension and you'll notice that you see you don't get our data with this particular feature. That's something to be aware of. You know, it only works on data points. So now if I go and select central, you'll see that it uh, turns up. And now when I select that again, it goes off and does another analysis. And you'll see that I get a lot more this time. I actually get a lot more of a story going on. And there's a lot going on here. And again, this might just need a little bit of pruning as an author to make sure this makes sense. But essentially, if you go into any of these marks, you'll start to understand that it's actually doing a lot of uh, analysis behind the scenes. And this time around, you'll see instead of 16, it's actually given us 18 of 35 fields. So every time it's doing an analysis, it's trying to make an educated guess what fields actually matter. And it's using statistical methods that, frankly, I don't fully understand. But um, you can actually click on this learn more link and it opens up a tab. I'll just bring this into the window here. It's opened up in my other screen. Um, you'll see here how it works. And so you can actually go in and read more about the sort of type of analysis and breakdown that it does. Um, but essentially, it's it's actually sort of well thought through. Now, like all of these features that you use sort of machine learning and AI, it's useful just to bear in context that you, you really need to sort of understand where these features are coming from. Um, they might drive your analysis, they might inform where you go next, but you still have to apply a little bit of rigor and thought in your own work as a creator to say, is that does that actually make sense in this analysis or with this data set? Okay, so that's the explained data feature set. I think it's a really cool addition. The fact that it's available for viewers is a really big thing as well, because I think for a long time, Tableau has been a very creator led product. And it's great to have some of this power come to viewers in a way that's so much easier for them to instigate without ever having to write a calculation or set anything up. And it's leading on the work that authors are doing as well, uh, because, of course, um, you know, authors build these data sets and, and, and sort of make these available to people. So that's a really, really quick summary of the new explained data features in 2021.1. I think this is actually a bigger deal than the, than I can sort of emphasize in this video, because um, uh, a couple of things. You know, just just the simple fact that they're willing to sort of bring this whole panel in here and, and sort of bring it in on the right hand side really suggests that Tableau is moving in a direction where they want to help the user understand things. And this right hand hand side panel is going to be where that context is conveyed. It's going to be where that story is told and explain data is the first thing here. Our state is sort of different because it's more of a, uh, an analysis that starts with a question, but explain data somewhere where, you know, some explanation is given 
context of our data seems to me like he's going to come here. Now, the other thing I would actually love is if this pane was made available to authors. So it's great that explain data can have this space. I'd love to put filters in here. I'd love to put controls in here. So uh, fingers crossed, they've done half the work. They've put their own feature in there. I'd love to be able to put my own features in there, maybe add a little filter section in there just to make my dashboard a little bit more user friendly and easy to use. But that's pretty much explained data in a nutshell. It's not a new feature, but it has been made available to viewers and they have given it a revised interface. So it's no longer a pop up and it's actually very prominent. And now everyone can use it along with their license. So that's really good to see. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video about 2021.2.